hey, we're gonna show you how to build a pond in your backyard. Let's go do this. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascape and it is that time of year. When I say that time of year, we are officially done outside. I know the guys just finished up, well got as far as they possibly could with the job out in Bartlett, knowing that we wouldn't finish it. I just got back from California working with Atlantis Water Gardens doing a giant rec pond, 140 some feet by 70 feet or something, and that's phase one of three. But this time of year, everybody always asks, when you're done, what do you guys do all winter? because we are definitely a seasonal business. It's kind of hard to be building ponds in the Chicagoland area when it's below freezing. So what we do, we stay busy and we stay busy doing all kinds of stuff. We have our Aquascape Academy, which is a two day hands-on class. We have travel projects we do. We have artists of the year coming in to build their creation in the sandbox. The rest of the time we train, we train, we train. And when I mean train, we build ponds and rip them out and build ponds and rip them out. And with that sandbox back there, one you guys are all too familiar with. They have the opportunity to not just design ponds, but rebuild ponds and work on edges, work on waterfalls, work on some of the basics and stuff. So let's give these guys a challenge and see if they can't pull this off. If I'm sitting in our construction area. Hey, let's start off, you know, I don't know if the whole world realizes this yet, but this man is moving. Oh, Corey, no. where are you going? Arizona. Arizona, like, which is somewhat, I'm feeling somewhat jealous, right? It's 30 degrees and in Arizona, it's it's, I think it's 32. Maybe, right? <laughs> maybe a little warmer. Yeah. So going out there to really kind of follow your passions, be a, a trainer, a coach. Yeah, along those lines. I think it's something that I've been planning for a while and it really does suck to leave the team here because I built a relationship with everyone here, obviously, but. Well, Corey, what do you think of this? One more time, can you build us something before you leave? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So guys, I have a challenge and I actually think this would be difficult for me. And if it's gonna be difficult for me, I think it's gonna be difficult for you guys. Guys, but I want you to build a pond using just the pond kit. We never do that. Never, never, <laughs> never. never. I don't even you know see? what's in a pond kit. I don't know if you could see that, but Chris's I, face was pretty confused. I like, don't, I don't what's know. a pond kit? It's a pond kit. I don't, I don't know. So we sell these pond kits, right? And normally, we almost never use them. Not almost. We literally never use the pond kit. We always have them custom made for us. And so we don't build 8 by 11 ponds. We don't build 16 by 20 foot ponds. We don't build 4 by 6s. Ours might be 7 by 27 or 16 by 32. Something that doesn't fall into the the pond kit boxes. And so what I want these guys to do is really just follow the directions that they give you in the pond kit, the specs that they give you in the pond kit. So you're gonna get this size liner. We don't have the luxury of saying, oh, we want more. You have to build it exactly with the materials you get. You don't get to use our professional foam gun. You don't get to use any of our professional tools. I don't even want you using a laser transit. Pretend you're a homeowner that doesn't have some of these tools. This is a wheelbarrow shovel built pond. In fact, the ball cart is Corey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? You're pretty big too, Steven. <laughs> so, sure. Corey and Steven. Yeah, like, so think about those rocks that you're getting. Think about how you guys are gonna build this. I want you to lay it out. I want you to to design it together. I don't care where it goes in the sandbox. I don't care where the waterfall is placed. It's completely up to you. You guys pretend you sold it, designed it, and you build it. And I'll check on you in a little bit. I'll go pull the pond kit, and you guys will even be surprised at what size pond kit it is. Mm. Sound good? Hopefully you guys are excited about this as I am. I can't wait to see what they're gonna build. I'm positive it'll look good, but I think there'll be some confusion on what size liner do we get? What do you mean we don't get our foam gun? God, that ball cart would've been nice to move these boulders. And if you guys see that ball cart, let me know if they cheated at all, cause I'm not gonna watch the entire thing, but uh, you guys let me know if they cheated any which way. All right, just grab the pond kit. What I'm gonna do is a eight by 11 small pond kit. In that small pond kit, you get a 12 by 15 foot liner. Personally, I would do something smaller than an eight by 11 foot pond. The reason I would go a little bit smaller is because I'd want the extra liner to go up the face of my biofalls. I'd want the extra liner to make sure I could do some cool edge work, that kind of stuff. If you go exactly to its fullest dimensions, if you're an inch off, you're not gonna have enough liner. The eight by 11 foot kit comes with a 12 by 15 foot liner. So you can do an eight foot by 11 foot pond, two feet deep, which is why you get the extra 12 by 15 foot liner. Personally, I would do a much smaller smaller pond, maybe shrink it into more like a seven by nine, maybe someplace in there. So I have extra liner to go up the face of my biofalls, extra liner to do some cool edge work, that kind of stuff. But let me show you what actually comes in this kit. 
but we get a 12 by 15 foot liner. We get same size piece of underlayment. You get a uh, thousand biofalls and a 400 skimmer. Basically that's the smaller stuff and we never use the smaller stuff. We always upgrade to the larger skimmer, the larger biofall. So I think it's easier to install them because there's less digging, but harder to disguise and harder to maintain and harder to get the pump in because there's not as much real estate inside the skimmer box. It also comes with inch and a half flex PVC, 25 feet. So they'll have to be mindful of the distance from the skimmer box to the biofalls. Check valve, welcome kit, dosing system, the installation kit, which is all of our behind the scenes stuff like our silicone, waterfall sealant, the, the foam and PVC glue and primer and stuff. So the kit literally has everything they need to build that pond minus the rocks and the shovels. And so let's get them going with this. We'll bring them the kit and see what they're gonna come up with design-wise. Oh. That's like Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> so what'd you get for us? We have an eight by 11 small pond kit. So inside is everything we say is everything a homeowner or a contractor needs to build that size pond. Minus some shovels and some rock. And you've got those two things, so you should be done in six hours. Yeah. <laughs> and so guys, when you're done with this, I have a surprise tomorrow too. Do you want me to tell you what the surprise is or would you rather wait to be surprised? Surprise. surprise. All right, have fun. Can't wait to see how you lay it out. Make sure you show everybody how you're gonna lay it out. Order some of the things maybe you've learned over the years and I can't wait to see it. You guys uh, don't call me if you have a problem. Thanks, Santa. Right. <laughs> Why'd you guys tell him a surprise? Yeah, I don't, like, I don't like surprises. Right? I would rather know, wouldn't you? Yeah, probably a medium pond cut. <laughs> <laughs> On <laughs> top of the other one? <laughs> yeah. All right, I guess it's the five of us. We're gonna go ahead and lay this pond out and we will walk you through that discussion on how we're gonna lay this pond out. And I think we'll do it the old fashioned way since no equipment, no ball cart, no nothing. We'll do the old fashioned garden hose trick. Okay, so we unboxed everything out of the small pond kit. I'm gonna go through real quick with you what is included in that pond kit. We have everything laid out over here on the deck behind me. To start, we've got our fabric and liner. So we've got a 12 by 15 piece of geotextile woven underlayment. Then we have a 15 by 12 foot piece of EPDM liner, inch and a half by 25 feet of flex PVC, 1000 biofalls. It's got a little bit different of a rock tray than our signature series stuff does. And then we also have the 400 skimmer with the fake rock lid and then you've got all the components filter mat all that stuff inside as well then you have our component box this is all of the stuff that will help us hook up the skimmer to the liner then of course you have your dual union check valve you've got your aqua surge 3000 pump you've got an auto dosing system and then of course last but not least you have a very awesome aquascape lifestyle welcome kit and we'll go through that at the very end with you guys and show you what the cool stuff is in there so the guys before we lay everything out and get back here and start moving all of our tools we always like to cover up patio areas or decking areas or anywhere that we're gonna be making a mess. So the guys went ahead and cut an additional piece of fabric. They brought in a scrap piece of fabric that we had laying around. We're gonna cover up this patio and then we're gonna bring in some of those three by eight foot plastic mats to really protect this patio so that we can lay stone and that kind of stuff on it. Before we do this, we should really lay out the pond so that we have a very clear view of everything that's happening in this yard, determine the location of the pond, but also the biofalls, the skimmer, the components, that kind of stuff. And when we do that, we are going to operate inside the parameters or the dimensions of our liner and fabric. So let's pull this fabric up and lay out the pond, which is what we should do first, okay? So guys, we have a 12 by 15 foot liner. We're gonna go about 20 inches deep on this pond. I think 20 to 24 is more than sufficient in our area to overwinter koi, right? And goldfish or anything like that. It's really not necessary to go any deeper than two feet, right? Wouldn't you guys agree on this pond? Yeah. yeah. So knowing that we have a 12 by 15 foot liner and we have this canvas and we're going two feet deep, the max size of our pond is only going to be what, Jack? Uh, eight by 11. That's exactly right. The reason we can only go at max eight by 11 is because we have to compensate for two feet of depth on both sides, going down the shelves and then back up. So we're decreasing increasing the dimension of that liner by four feet. So you've got two feet down and two feet up, and then it brings us to an eight by 11 foot piece of liner that we're able to use. So guys, I don't know how you feel about putting a biofalls right off the edge of the pond if we make that pond eight by 11, or if we shrink the pond a little bit, and let's just say do like a six by eight, six by nine foot pond, and then have a couple foot stream off the side. I think that would be a heck of a lot easier for us. I'm thinking we do more of like a seven by nine foot pond. We shrink it in to more like a seven by nine. What do you guys say to that? Yeah, I agree, because that way we can get, well, especially if they're like a bird-loving family, 
plate, they can get a little bit of a slow moving stream so the birds can come over there and kind of drink the pond. So we'll go for like a seven by nine foot pond, yeah. right? And then, a, and then a couple foot stream and then we'll push the biofalls back a little bit, right? Yeah. So we'll still have enough liner using the 12 by 15 foot piece to go from the connection at the skimmer, which will be the far side of the pond, all the way to the face plate of the biofalls. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll bring the spray paint in. Corey, what do you think? We already have this cool circular patio right here and it's almost like this cutout right here just screams for the edge of the pond to come right up to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll look cooler that way too if the water comes right up against the patio here. Yep. So we're gonna go for that. First. So I'm standing on the patio and Corey brought a really good design idea on how cool it would be to bring that liner and that pond edge right up to this cutout part of the patio. So you can see they're starting to lay out the garden hose in the shape that they want. And Jack has his tape measure out. Right now he's got it set at six feet. So we're gonna try and do like a six by nine foot pond as we're coming in through here. So we're gonna go nine feet this way and go really no more than six feet, seven feet going that way. Really focus on the shape. Luis is going about 50 15 feet back, which is way more than we want. So we're gonna go from the farthest edge to the farthest edge to really make this thing work. So we've laid out our pond. Feel pretty good about the shape. We're gonna refine it a little bit, I think. You know, maybe we'll bring this edge in a little bit, create a little bit more of a peninsula in through here. But you see the overall shape, it's very amoebic. You can see we've already placed our components, so we've got our 400 skimmer here. This is our mechanical filter. Guys and girls out there, this is what houses the pumps. This is what maintains that top water draw, that skimming action, to disallow any windblown debris or anything that falls on the water surface from falling to the bottom. It actually sucks it into a skimmer basket that's located in. Here. Up here, you've got the biofalls. This is what's going to maintain your biological filtration and really help with overall ecosystem approach that we use when building ponds. So we got our biofalls here, skimmer over there, and then you can see we have the shape of our pond. Now, one of the things that we discussed as a group when designing this water feature was where are we gonna put the biofalls? Are we going to try and make the pond as big as possible and have the biofalls right off the side? Or are we going to shrink the pond, having it still fit the space, but bring that biofall back off the edge and create more of a stream effect. Jack had a great idea. Maybe our homeowners are bird loving people and they want to see more of a stream with some backwater, shallow water, slow moving water areas. We pulled that biofalls back and shrunk the pond. When having the biofalls right off the side, you need to have rocks that are now almost two feet high, about knee high, in order to have the bottoms below water and to frame out that waterfalls, and then it's just a big bale style waterfalls. If I pull this thing back to here, I can do a series of cascades using much smaller boulders, which might be a little bit more convenient for you homeowners out there that are doing it at home, and you don't wanna put these massive rocks in or maybe don't have the back strength to do that. So we're gonna push this thing back and do a little bit more of a meandering stream, and the waterfalls will actually come in through this area through here, which is ideal because it's the farthest point away from the skimmer box and we'll really get that push of water, getting the entirety of the surface area of the pond really having that circulation. Last thing we're gonna do is Corey and Luis are gonna double check their measurements and make sure that we still are going to fall within that 12 by 15 foot liner, taking into account the four feet of depth change because we are gonna go down deep. they didn't do correctly is they went from this point to this point. What you want to do is you want to go from the two farthest points on the layout of the pond. So you would want to go from here all the way over to here. Or in this case, since we're going to use one piece of liner to the biofalls, we're going to go all the way to the biofalls, okay? Right? 